So if you clicked on the video, you know exactly why I distilled the shit up here. But I just wanted to put this up to show you just how mini the mini expansion is. This is the distilled cast strength expansion. It is 55 cards. <laughs> and the shipping on it was uh, kind of high compared to what the price was. The expansion was $15 and the shipping was 10 bucks. And it was a pre-order from Paverson Games. Now, like I said, I do like mini expansions like this because they don't really mess up the ratio to the box without changing a lot of things and adding a lot of components. For the price, yeah, 10 to $15, that's cool. The shipping, a little high. But I did open this, I looked through it just because, you know, I don't like to get show you guys me cutting plastic, unless you're into that thing. But let me know in the comments if you are. So what does this mini expansion add? And do I think it's worth it? I like distilled. I like the mechanics of the game. I also like how the history of alcohol and how it works and everything that goes along with it, the science. I'm not a big drinker myself. I used to be, but those were back in the old days. So mini expansion uses these green sleeves, standard American. They're gonna need two packs. And I say that because there's four rule cards, but there's 51 playable cards. Or you don't need to use sleeves if you don't wanna do that. But you know, I like to sleeve stuff because collector value. Let's check in on what the cast strength is. Cast strength is a mini expansion for distilled designed to add a touch more complexity and variety of the game. The expansion has four parts, new distiller upgrades, special flavors, upgraded premium ingredients, and an exciting new dynamic market mechanic. And of course, we got some nice little labeling here, like, you know, non-chilled filtered batch number 24. Those are our ingredient cards, our dynamic market, flavor cards, upgrades. Now, three roll cards. All right, let's read the rules. Welcome to Cast Strength, a mini expansion for Distilled, designed to add a touch more complexity and variety to the game. While this expansion is only a deck of cards, it packs a punch, presenting players with a host of new and interesting decisions. We highly recommend that you only add this expansion to your games once you're familiar with the base game. The expansion has four parts. New distiller upgrades, special flavors, upgraded premium ingredients, and an exciting new dynamic market. Each part can be added to the game independently or together. The choice is yours. This content list, or component list, I do love. Three cast strength rule cards, check. Four upgrade cards, check. Four flavor cards, check. 32 premium market cards, I'm pretty sure they're there. And the 12 dynamic market cards. On the back side. There are four new distiller upgrades and four new set of flavors. Set up, these cards can be shuffled in any other distillery upgrade cards and flavor cards and using the game with or without the other parts of the expansion. Cast sales, special rules, which is a card I'll show later. This upgrade allows you to sell aged spirits in the same round that they've been distilled, selling them by the cast, allowing the fictional buyer to age the bottle, the spirit themselves. As a result, the barrel must always be discarded, even if it would normally be allowed to be returned to the storeroom. Aged spirits sold this way gave aged spirit flavor bonuses as normal. Flavor powers. Flavors in this expansion act like a standard flavor card will be added to the spirit as normal. Expansion flavors have a special power that allows you to replace another flavor in your spirit being sold with the top flavor from the draw deck, helping you improve the taste and gain money for your spirits. Upgraded premium ingredients. 32 upgraded premium ingredient cards add power to the 16 premium sugars in the base game, presenting you with more ways to earn money and score points, as well as creating powerful combos. Set up before setting up the premium market. Step three of the game, remove 32 premium ingredient cards from the base game and replace them with the 32 upgraded premium ingredients. Make sure you don't remove turbo yeast, mountain spring water, or premium ingredients from the Africa and Middle East expansion if you are using them. Alternative setup, if you keep, prefer to keep some of the original premium ingredients, then only replace one of each of the 16 base game ingredients with one of these upgraded versions. Upgraded premium ingredients. Gameplay. The upgraded premium ingredients function the same way as the cards they replace, but include a special power that will trigger in the distill phase, the selling phase, or the condition is met, such as having a certain amount of other cards included in the spirit stack. 
To help balance the game with the addition of new powers, the market cost to buy these ingredients has been increased by one. While this may make it harder than four ingredients you need at first, once you take advantage of the new powers, you should be able to achieve the higher score than before. As a result, we recommend increasing the difficulty level when playing distilled solo. Example, a fruit is being sold that includes grapes, figs, mixed fruits, and three alcohols. Thanks to the power on the grapes card, the seller gains two points for the other two citrus fruit cards, or the other two fruit cards in the spirit. They miss out on two points from the figs power, as there's only three alcohol cards included, not four. I don't know if that's a really good example, especially say I gotta go find the grapes. Changing the price on the market, I don't think Distilled really needs that to make the game harder. The game is actually pretty balanced and hard. But I'll have to try this mode and see if I like it. I mean, I do really like Distilled base game, so I'm going to put my faith that Paverson tested it in thoroughly and said, yeah, this was worth it. I don't like the fact that, you know, it's one of those, you got to remember to add one to the cost. I also feel like you could throw all the ingredients together just by looking at them. I don't think it matters because of how the dynamic the market system is. It's really hard to actually burn through the market. And that's why the money thing kind of I'm not a fan of. But I'll try it that way before I decide I want to uh, just play it normally. The dynamic market is the new feature. 12 dynamic market cards add new variable elements to the game, changing the cost of certain cards and increasing the sell value of certain spirits. This is also the other reason I don't really care for the market prices going up and down because the dynamic market is going to change how much things cost. Set up. Shuffle the 12 dynamic market cards together and place them face up in the deck near the previous market in view of all players. Players should always be able to see how the market is changing. Each card is made up of three sections. Plus one shows cards cost one additional money to buy. Minus one shows cards cost one fewer to buy, but they cannot never cost less than zero. The bottom shows the regional spirits and which are in demand, and you'll receive higher money rewards when you sell the spirit from the region. Earn extra money. Regional demands includes home spirits if your distiller identity is from that region with increased demand. Dynamic market and trading. Changes apply to price, also apply to when trading. Gameplay. In the first round of the dynamic market cards are not used. The card that is visible on the top of the draw deck will apply to round two. Then from the second round on before activation, Starter turn effects. Move the top card from the deck face up to the next pile next yeah, face up pile next to it. The move cards will apply to the current round. The real reveal card in the draw deck will apply to the next round. So players always get to see what's coming up in later rounds. Cover the previous card with the newly drawn one so there's always two cards visible. Ensure that it's clear which card is active. With the Africa and Middle East expansion cards, the cost of ancient grains, hydroponic plants, and organic fruit ingredients are only increased or decreased once. While well, they count as two sugars, they're only a single card. Count these sugars only once. The cost of glucose syrup is never altered. Count glucose syrup as a single sugar type across all premium ingredient power supply. And because of the dynamic market, I don't think you need, because that's just a luck factor that you could get something really good cheap. But there's only 12 cards. So with the dynamic market, you only have seven rounds. First card is up, but it's not in fact until the next round. And this is why I don't think you really need that market change because this is just random. And then it goes into effect, but you'll know what is in demand for the next round. And because of this, I don't really think you need to adjust the price too much because it's random. Well, in this case, like, you know, fruits go up. I don't think it needs that, but again, I didn't design it. Let's see how it works out first before I try to go down this crazy rabbit hole of uh, thinking I know better. We have our four new upgrades, two specialists, and two pieces of equipment. This is the cast sales, which you may sell an age spirit in the same round it is distilled. Do not add a bottle, and the barrel must be discarded. I really don't know if that's a good card. I also like the fact that all the expansion cards are marked with the giant distilled logo, so you know what's what. Forklift. During the market phase, you may move up to two purchase, make up to two purchases per turn instead of one. Refill premium market between purchases. And then for its reward, plus one point for each premium ingredient in your pantry. 
that could be a real handy card if you have a lot of money and maybe that's why they want to do the market thing, but there's only one copy of it. We have the Moonshiner Specialist. During the distill phase, you may choose to make Moonshine, even if it's a distilled spirit stack, including one or more sugars. Gain three points for every two of your Moonshine Spirit labels. Really don't know if that's good, because it's really something you don't want to make. <laughs> Unless it's first two rounds. And at that point, it's just luck if you get that out of the, you know, one copy. Specialist. Collector. Once per market phase, you may purchase a premium bottle from the truck. Could be really cool, because bottle collecting is something that I rarely do with distilled when I'm playing. And honestly, I, I think it's kind of a trap. So this is nice, but having only one copy, I don't think it helps. Our four flavor cards. So we have Sherried, that will give you a dollar. When selling, you may replace one card in the taste with one another taste card from the top of the deck. These are nice. They all function the same, they all do the same thing. I like the fact that they can help or make it worse, I guess. I mean, it's a gamble if you're gonna get a better flavor than a good one already. They're not worth a lot, but they do have the potential to be really good or, you know, give you a terrible flavor. But having a limit of four, it's iffy. Our ingredients. Fourteen of the wheat, ten of the fruits or sugars, and eight of the fruits. So grain, you're gonna usually make a lot of grain alcohol. So we got the most out of there with fourteen cards. So these are the premium ingredients. They are pricey, and. They really don't give you that much of a bonus unless you are actually playing them later in the game. Early first two rounds, they just don't seem to be worth it. They're good, but the bonus here is when selling, earn one extra money for each other, other green sugar. Max three. So it doesn't really pay for itself until you actually have two other grains. I don't think, and it costs five. It's worth two points. And you get two copies of that. Corn gives you two money. When selling, gain one point for each other grain card included, max three. Cost five gives you two points. Again, really expensive, and there's only two copies. Millet. One coin, cost four. After selling, you may immediately purchase one ingredient at a one coin discount. And this is where I'm saying the, I don't think adding an extra cost to everything is good. Two copies of that. We have rice. After distillation, this card is in the spirit stack. You may add a basic gra uh, grain sugar to your pantry. That costs three. Gives you nothing, though. Doesn't give you any extra money. Just gives you a point. <laughs> Don't know if that's really worth it. And it's luck if you're, you know, got to have this in your spirit stack. Right. When selling, earn one for each water card included. And it costs four. These seem very expensive to me, and I don't feel like you're getting that much out of it. Shorgum, after distillation, if this card is in the spirit stack, add an alcohol to your pantry. It costs three, gives you a point, but it doesn't give you any money either. And then we have wheat. Gives you an extra money, once selling, earn one money for each other yeast card included. Four, and this has no limit. I don't know why you'd add so much yeast. Now we have Aguave, gives you three cash. When selling, gain one point for each other. Uh, <laughs> plant sugar card included, max three, and it costs six, is worth three. Still really expensive. That costing seven, plus with the market randomizer, this could cost eight, it could cost six, base. That's what I'm saying, it's just, do you really need to add that plus one? 
especially if you're talking about making a lot of points, playing this game, I learned that you need money to buy cards to make points. And limiting that, I don't see the trade-off. And see, and Aziz, and whatever. Cost one money, premium ingredient. After dissolution, if this card is in the Spurs deck, you may add a basic plant sugar to your pantry. Cost four, one point. Kind of high. If it gave you two points, maybe. We have Palm, gives you two cash when selling it. Earn one extra money for each other plant card included. Again, it says other, and it costs five. We have the potatoes, premium potatoes. So Idaho Russet Golds, Yukon Gold. After selling, immediately purchase one item at a one coin discount, and it costs four. I don't see that changing the market like or I needed that still. I still don't see the reason for the price increase. Sugarcane, when selling, earn two money if four or more alcohol cards are included, and it's two. If this gave you two sugars to for two extra alcohol, maybe, but still costing five and two points, it seems high. Then we have the fruits. These are usually the big money makers and the big alcohol makers, especially for flavors. First up are apples, premium. Give you a buck. After distilling, if this card is a spirit tech, may add a basic fruit to your pantry, which is cool because, you know, fruits are expensive. 2.5. This kind of pays for itself, but I still would just play with regular apples. We have grapes premium. When selling, earn one point for each other grape or fruit card included. Max three. This costs seven. It is worth four points. Really cool. But this costing eight, potentially nine, or, you know, seven. Because minus one is all you're ever going to get, Max. With $3, it's good, but the cost is way too high. Premium figs, gives you two cash. One selling, gain two points if four more alcohol cards are included. Three points, cost six. Kind of high. And then we have Juniper Berries. Gives you two, when selling, earn one extra coin for each other fruit card, including max three, six, three points. So because of the cost, I'm having a hard time thinking that adding at one cost on top of everything is good. I think it's actually going to slow the game down. But like I said, didn't test any of this yet and have faith in Patterson. Because the still day is actually really good. Just as a side note, they are making a new game. I don't remember when it's coming to Kickstarter or Game Found, but it has something to do with classical instruments. I'll throw that somewhere in this corner over here if I can find it. I do like the dynamic market card. This actually does what I like to do with most games is pre-planning and strategy. This is also going to drive competition up like crazy because your opponents are going to see the values of these cards and the modifiers of what's coming up in the market next. And they're going to play just like you, trying to get the best deal they can in the regions they can sell. Having the regions being sort of locks, eh, that kind of sucks just because there are so many different regions and every distiller is kind of different on their regions. So if it works out for one guy, it doesn't work out for the other. And it is RNG. I like this system. It's really neat. And I think this adds a lot of variety itself. I think this is actually really cool. The premium fruit stuff, not a big fan of. The flavors, helpful, but I don't think there's enough to modify the flavor deck. This is a luck thing. The new upgrades, I don't think they're great. I think they should have probably tried to make that ratio of upgrades flavors with that a little bit more uh, equal. But this is a nice touch. I do like this. How much space is this going to take up in the game? Uh, we will find that out shortly after I sleeve everything because I'm that guy. All right, got done sleeving. Super easy. And I do not think it's going to sit right with the expansion. Even if you use this to hold some of the expansion cards. Certain things we can see, like the flavors being four cards. It's not going to add much to the stack. 
I mean, it'll fit, but it's not perfect. Same with the four upgrades. Obviously, they work out. The market, right there, it's not organized the way I'd like it to be, but it does fit if you put it with the regular ingredients. The premium ingredients, because you're adding about an inch, it's going to float unless you can just push it down. And one thing I have to say about Distilled is, it is a game you definitely should play with sleeves just because of how much shuffling is involved. So these contents are going to shift around. I'm not uh, too happy about that, but I've actually never been perfectly happy with the way this is organized. I think they should have just turned the cards sideways and made one giant tray. But it is what it is. If this actually kind of fit here, this would be nice if this was lowered. I just don't think it's going to sit right. So that's a little disappointing. And I don't know what I could actually take out to throw into this box. I don't, I don't think sleep cards will fit in here. Yep. All right, so that's not even going to work. That is not fun. I might have to make a special insert for this. We have our three instruction cards, they can go up there. But the contents are definitely going to shift in the box. I'm not going to lie, that's kind of, that kind of sucks. I did try this idea, but that sticks it way too high, that's not going to work. So is it a good buy? I think $15 for a deck of cards is pretty good. I think the shipping is uh, really high for paying $10 for shipping. Oh, and the way it was shipped to me, it was just shipped into a padded envelope. Is this expansion worth it? Right now, I don't feel like it's worth it. If you can go to a game shop and pick it up locally without paying shipping costs, I think, yeah, sure, get it. Get it if you really, really love distilled. I don't think any of these cards or changes that they added really matter. The only thing that changes the game really is this dynamic market. I do like the dynamic market. Make the expansion worth it? I don't think so. I don't think the ingredients are worth it. I don't think the upgrades or the flavors. I'm kind of curious. What do you guys think? You think that it's actually worth it for this mini expansion? Like I really like this stilled and I'm, it is a phenomenal game, but I don't think this is a very good expansion. Granted, it is their first expansion that I know they did. But we'll have to see. I will play around with it and see how it goes. That has been my unboxing and pretty much first impressions of the expansion. I have not done gameplay testing with it yet, and so far I don't think it's worth it. On the plus side, it is a cheap expansion. $15 isn't bad, but the shipping is a little high. You can pre-order, or I shouldn't say pre-order, you can order most of the components for Distilled from Paverson Games webpage. I think they st are still selling this. But don't let my opinions dissuade you. I'm just showing you exactly what you're getting for this expansion. But if you're looking for like the mat, the metal cubes, metal coins, which by the way, if you want to win some metal coins, I do have them on my 2024 giveaway. You can check that out. I don't know if they still have these metal uh, resource cubes for your tree, but they have all the components. They have the Africa expansion. So definitely go check that out. Not paid, definitely not paid by Paverson to try to shill stuff. I just, I like Distilled. It's one of those games that if you like it and you want to get the stuff for it instead of being ripped off with the secondary market, just get it from Paverson's. Just trying to save other game players a buck or two. And then uh, YouTube plugs. If you like what I do, please subscribe. If you don't, leave me comments below. If you like what I do, tell me what I am also doing well in the comments. Other than that, take care, guys, and GG's.